So let's get into SOLIDWORKS Visualize. The idea with SOLIDWORKS Visualize is, is to enable anyone to um, have access to really exciting and really um, enhanced visualization with their SOLIDWORKS um, data so that you can make decisions about aesthetics, about form, about all those things that go into a uh, into a uh, conversation about a product and you can do this in a fast and easy way. So you look at something like the uh, image I just brought up here, the Mercedes, that was done, that rendering was done inside of SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Now this is a new standalone product. Some of you may be familiar with a software that was called Bunk Speed. Okay? And essentially Bunk Speed is now SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Okay, it's been totally, wholly purchased, it's been absorbed into SOLIDWORKS, and um, th that is now our technology, and it is our SOLIDWORKS Visualize product. With, of course, many enhancements now that it is in the SOLIDWORKS family. So we have two packages or levels of SOLIDWORKS Visualize. We have Visualize Standard, and we have Visualize Professional. One of the really cool things about SOLIDWORKS Visualize is that as long as you have and this is for every single separate seat um, that you have a uh, SOLIDWORKS Professional or Premium on active subscription for every one of those seats you have already the ability, the license to run a, a seat of SOLIDWORKS Visualize Standard. So if you have in your company two seats of SOLIDWORKS Premium and four seats of SOLIDWORKS Professional you have access to six licenses of SOLIDWORKS Visualize Standard as you choose to, to use them. Now, what are the differences? Well, Visualize Standard is the one that's really the, the sort of for the masses, right? So, you want to you want to make your model look as lifelike and realistic as possible. You want to show that that beautiful, that gorgeous rendering that's going to get the people that are looking to greenlight your project or looking to make a decision your your um your your item versus somebody else's item you want to do that in, in a convincing manner and SARS Visualize will let you do that it is basically a photo the camera still camera for your SOLIDWORKS data so if you want to take a still image of a virtual photograph of a virtual product in SOLIDWORKS Visualize Standard is the tool for that Now, Visualize Professional takes it to another level. So this allows for animations of various types. You can do keyframe animations, you can do fly arounds, you can do the virtual reality type of, you know, drag a, an image on screen, and multiple, multiple GIFs that look like it's a rotatable image. You can do all that in SOLIDWORKS Visualize Professional. You can also do pre-baked lighting, you can do uh, camera filter effects that are advanced, um, and you can also have a, a multi-render uh, queue, so you can queue up a bunch of renderings and walk away and have the software churn through as opposed to just doing one at a time. So if you're doing a lot of anime, a, lo a lot of renderings of images, if you're doing um, animations, you want to do that and render those with the high-quality rendering engine that we have inside of Visualize, then you're going to be looking at um, when we're looking at SOLIDWORKS Visualize Professional, and I recommend people try out Visualize Standard first, and you know, if especially if you have the free version, you have that, so go ahead and use that, and then you'll be able in a position to engage us, and we can talk to you more about what you can else you can do with Professional. The whole idea with Visualize is part of that that entire process of making. Um, thing, things from concept to reality. So part of the process in many product design scenarios is aesthetics. You know, how do you make decisions you know, on aesthetics? Well, you do it the same kind of way that you do it with mechanical and electrical functionality, except that the way you prototype it is different. Okay? And the idea with Visualize is you can do virtual prototyping of different materials, at different, um, different kinds of uh, of lighting and things like that that your product may be um, exposed to or typically will be in like a darkened room or a bright sunlit light area or whatever you can see how your aesthetics are going to perform if you will 
using Solid Visualize. So you can make a, a faster decision, a better decision, um, further upstream in your overall design process. And again, we're talking about if you are using uh, product photography, marketing and sales type stuff. If you're going to, if you're doing that now, this is the workflow that you're maybe looking at here. You know, you go all the way through the initial part, and then you have to take the product shots, get into marketing and sales. That's where Visualize is going to help you because we're going to step in there and we're going to take out the need to do product photography on prototypes. So you can do the, get to visualize ahead of physical prototype. Physical prototype will still be necessary for a number of other reasons, okay? But not it won't be there um, just for um, seeing the aesthetics because you can play the aesthetics, vary the aesthetics very quickly, and visualize, and then hone in on kind of what you want to do and then move forward with the physical prototyping and the marketing and such like that. So people that are using visualize versus old old techniques. Of, of building prototypes, seeing how they look, then make a decision that, hey, that's not the right color or this finish should be different or whatever and doing it again and again. You know, companies are telling us that they're seeing an average of 40% time reduction in that part of the process. So the whole idea, again, with Visualize, it, you know, people think renderings is for pretty pictures. It really isn't. If you are doing aesthetics as part of your design process, then really, a tool like Solid Visualize is going to get you there faster, get you to the end game faster in your product development cycle. Now, what's really nice about Visualize is it's like a SolidWorks product. I mean, it's, it runs outside of SolidWorks. It's a separate tool for a good reason. A lot of times marketing people are using it and that kind of thing. But it has an easy-to-use intuitive interface. In fact, there's kind of a beginner level and a more advanced level of the interface. You can actually tailor. You can start with the beginner level then you know, turn on more options as you as you uh, want to try more things. Okay, it is by far the industry best time to quality. Visualize makes excellent use of existing hardware that you have, and it really makes great use of the new graphics GPU um, capabilities that are out there today. Visualize puts the user in a photographic environment. Again, if you're doing renderings, and especially if you're used to doing that with physical, um, you know, photo lab, Photoshop type stuff, you're setting up a photo, um, a photo studio. You know, you are going to be thinking in terms of a photographer. You're going to be thinking in terms of focal length and f f stop. You're going to be thinking in terms of of uh, letting dolly in and out. You know, that kind of stuff. That's the environment that. Visualize puts you in. So if you're familiar with photography um, and you know photographic studios and things like that, you'll be right at home and visualize. Okay. And again, we have some really powerful real-time features um, like bake lighting and shadows and turntables that are available in the uh, professional product that even give you more capabilities in the photographic side. Now with Visualize, you get you know hundreds of different kinds of materials and different kinds of environments. You don't have to go ahead and create a bunch of your own stuff. There's all kinds of, of uh, lighting environments and all those things are there. Of course, you can make your own if you want to, but most people find that using what's built in gives great results right out of the box. And if you want to tweak those a little bit here or there, it's really easy to do that as well. Now again, what we're talking about here is photographic quality at any resolution you want to do. So whether you're taking making an image for a web page, or whether you're making an image that has to have super high pixel density because you're going to you know publish it in, in actual print, a magazine, or you're gonna maybe you're gonna blow it up uh, for a trade show banner or something like that. Whatever resolution you want to do, Visualize will create that picture perfect quality image is, you know, of whatever size you decide to make. And again, all these free materials are built into Visualize. You can go online and look at them if you want to for mysolworks.com, but you can also just, when you go into Visualize, you can just go ahead and look on the library and browse around. It's built right in. You don't have to download them and incorporate them. All those free things are right there um, 
for you to access. Another ability we have in Visualize is a live CAD update. Basically, what we'll do is we'll bring in the, the, the SOLIDWORKS model in the Visualize, you do your rendering, you do your, your, all the things you're going to do, and then if the model changes, you can actually have Visualize tell you, hey, that file that I looked at originally brought this in with has changed, or you can do it at will, like you go over and, and update yourself. You have that ability to then reincorporate the new geometry in your existing design. And again, all the setups you already have will still be there. Now, hardware is very important for SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Okay, this is a professional high-end rendering tool. So therefore, if you want to go fast with this tool, you're going to need supporting hardware. It works perfectly fine on just the machine you have right now. It's just a matter of how long you want to wait around for the rendering to happen. And again, we're as fast as anybody. There's nobody faster than us. In many cases, we are much faster depending on the supporting hardware because Visualize not only makes use of CPUs, but we're the first softwares in this space to use GPUs as well. So we can use those higher-end graphics cards that don't do a whole lot in interactive graphics for SOLIDWORKS, but they are very important, almost a linear relationship in scalability with that hardware and the speed at which Visualize renders. So for 10 seconds, you know, here's an example where this model with a given pixel size and a given um, a given lighting environment and, and, and whatnot, that's all set up. And then, okay, with, after 10 seconds for just CPU-based, you know, with a Xeon, high-end Xeon, that kind of thing, that's what it looks like after 10 seconds. But with a high-end GPU graphics card, after 10 seconds, you get this. Now, again, eventually what you see on the left will look like what's on the right. It's just a matter of how long will it take for that to res up. That's the, that's the, that's the, the crux of of hardware acceleration with Visualize. And you can see here um, a reseller over in uh, over in India went ahead and actually had a whole bunch of graphics cards. They actually physically tested rendering times uh, with various graphics cards using the NVIDIA line. Um, and then you can see here that on my M3800, I have a K1100M. It's the one on the very bottom. So Visualize works perfectly fine on my laptop. It just takes a while for things to render for a given, you know, complexity and and, uh, and render size. So the exact same render setup, the exact same project was rendered on these different machines with for the different graphics cards swapped in and out of the machines. And you can see here that it takes an hour and 15 minutes to render on my laptop. You know, if you have a just a single um, M4000 card, it cuts it down into a fifth of the time, right? So 13 minutes. If you have a machine like we have at, at uh, the GSC Technology Center with dual M5000s, that one hour, 15 minute time on my laptop is reduced to less than five minutes. Now, again, like everything else, there are diminishing returns and you have to kind of understand, you know, how multiple graphics cards will interact, you know, with over as a single one. So you might say, well, gee, uh, dual M5000s, that's 4 minutes, 37 seconds. But if I get dual M6000s, it'll be a little faster. That's true. But when you look at the money involved, then things kind of sort out, just like with CPUs and the hardware discussion I have oftentimes. You know, it's not just the top, the top end that's going to be most cost effective. And notice also that an M6000, a single M6000, which costs $5,000 on the street, uh, is actually slower than dual M5000, which costs, you know, $3,700. $3, so it's something that you want to be aware of in terms of the scalability and knowing that that you can uh, add two graphics cards if your hardware supports it, and that can give you better results than a single, more expensive graphics card beyond that. You know, I should also mention that everything we're talking about here is NVIDIA-based. The GPU acceleration for SOLIDWORKS Visualize is specifically the CUDA cores, specifically the iRay technology that NVIDIA has. So you will not see this graphics acceleration in graphics cards from other manufacturers. This is specifically NVIDIA. Now people will ask me, well, what about SOLIDWORKS Visualize versus PhotoView 360? I mean, PhotoView has been around for a long time. 
And it is true, you know, that's not going away. You know, there are there's a place for it. It's you're doing a lot of changes. You want to be right inside of of the CAD environment as you're making changes and seeing the diff what happens uh, pretty immediately in the uh, in the rendering. Photo View 360 is in the same environment, so that's a good place to do that. You're doing quick uh, kind of data reviews, screenshot type things for internal. Uh, that could be a useful thing as well, but understand that Visualize is really going to be the tool that's going to really help you deliver that photo quality sort of wow factor, that emotional um, impact in your rendering. It's just it, it's just a different rendering engine, and it's just made to do this kind of work uh, more effectively. Okay. Um, the other thing with Visualize is, as I mentioned earlier, it runs outside of SolidWorks. It's not a SolidWorks. You know, like add-in, it's a separate software, kind of like SolidWorks Composer is. You know, the fact that you have a free license of Visualize Standard for every license of SolidWorks Pro and Premium that you have currently on subscription, that's just a licensing thing. But you don't have to have them tied together. So, you know, you can have the visual the SolidWorks Visualize on on people's computers that have nothing to do with SolidWorks at all. So. The other benefit there is people that are doing the rendering aren't tying up a SOLIDWORKS license, whereas if someone is doing rendering inside of Photo 360, that has to be done inside of SOLIDWORKS itself, which ties up a SOLIDWORKS license. So I think Visualize, again, just like with the Composer idea of, hey, it's not necessarily a SOLIDWORKS user, so don't make it based on the SOLIDWORKS internal software. Let them have their own separate licensing and not tie up the, the whole SOLIDWORKS license. That's a good way to go, I think, with Visualize. And that's really where a lot of people are just trying it out and saying, oh, marketing is always bothering me about this. Here, I'm going to give them my, my copy of Visualize because I'm not going to use it, you know, the one tied to my seat. And they can go ahead and use it and uh, render things themselves without me having to stop going to 4 v 360 and, and do a, a session with them on that. Now, because Visualize is, you know, used to be bunk speed, right? Bunk speed has been around for many, many years. And, in fact, it is... Not a new, it's not like something that's how it works, just created out of, out of thin air. It's a long and and established pedigree of rendering excellence that, that we have now in our, on our disposal in the form of SOLIDWORKS Visualize. So very large companies all around the globe in all kinds of different uh, verticals have been using SOLIDWORKS Visualize, essentially, that technology for years. And you can see that Visualize can make incredibly compelling uh, scenes from just regular product type shots to architectural type of uh, scenes and all different kinds of treatments in terms of lighting, environment, and material. So some of the shots here that are done. Again, interior shots. Look at the realism. Look at the, the lighting and how it's bouncing off all, all around the cabin. Okay, this bike, I mean, it looks like a photograph. It looks like something you could just reach out and, and grab and jump onto and start biking, but in fact, it is, it is a virtual reality type situation. It is a visualized rendering. Again, special camera effects to kind of show different aspects of your design. And now these are some of the renderings that I've done. This actually was the very first rendering I did when Visualize was first in beta last year. Um, I got a hold of it, and I just pulled up a model that I had, and I just turned one of the uh, the outside housing acrylic and rendered it, and you know, set up the camera angle, set a nice uh, short uh, short f number, so I get a, a nice depth of field there, and that's what I got right out of the box. Likewise, a lot of people ask me because this is my my lock screen, they asked me what where that came from. I said, well, it's all works visualized. I just took a basic gearbox I had, I applied some materials to it, and um, a little bit of paint just for fun on the uh, bearings there, and then rendered it out. That's what I got. You know, take a uh, transmission casing and turn it the outside uh, cover in a crystal. Yeah, you can do that and visualize. And again, notice the refraction and the interplay of the light through all the internal surfaces there. That's all just done very simple. Drag and drop the material and say, okay, go ahead and render it. I've had some fun with it as well. You know, doing different uh, compositions, sort of doing a backplate from, um, from one of my astronomy softwares, a, a moon picture, and then I just 
rendered this uh, this uh, 3D Content Central Starship Enterprise. And again, added some of those materials, made it look a little 1960-ish kind of colors. Did a study with cork. So, you know, my million dollar idea of having uh, this aluminum tumbler with this cork um, uh, liner for um, to keep it from skidding or scratching on the, uh, it's kind of its own built-in trivet or it's built-in uh, um, coaster, you know, and having that just, again, visualize and I just did two renderings and just composite them in, in paint.net. Again, another image here. This is just a, basically the, the the file I usually use for a composer demonstration. I just want to see how it rendered and visualized as is. Didn't change anything, just used the colors as they came across. Another study here. Again, you can really get creative here, right? It's just a basic, just sort of a three, three um, shaft uh, stage control here. But again, I just applied some different materials on there, sort of a matte brush. Uh, and then some, some chrome there, and then again, just use a little bit of creative camera there to just pop out the uh, subject of the scene and really makes a nice image out of otherwise it would look pretty plain and ordinary if it was just a regular screenshot from CAD. And, you know, playing a decal, our new logo here at GSC, when I just took a simple uh, study in white with just a simple logo to get some color to pop out what I'm trying to emphasize in the scene. And this model here, that 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 uh, picture, was actually a model that I created in SolidWorks Industrial Designer, and I just brought it into Visualize and just applied a background and sort of just rendered it that way. So the capabilities that you have inside, inside of SolidWorks Visualize at the standard level, you have photo quality, but visually dynamic still images that you can create right out of the standard tool. With SolidWorks Visualize Professional, then you can start creating animations, 360 spins, exterior VRs, again, where you have the virtual product and you grab it with your mouse on a web page and go up and down side to side. We can actually just render that out and make a VR setup right for the web for that and automated camera shoot arounds to spin around your product. Those are all things that are capable beyond the still images when you get into SolidWorks Visualize Professional. What I really want to do is encourage everybody to try Visualize. Most of you that are listening to this, viewing this, this uh, webinar, have at least one suite of SolidWorks uh, Professional or more on your on your uh, in your system right now that's that's on subscription in your company, which means that you have at least one license that you can uh, use um, for SolidWorks Visualize Standard. So it's a separate download. You go to the the uh, um, same place you download your SolidWorks uh, updates and you know, on the customer portal, and you just go into downloads and the software, and you can find Visualize Standard. You can download it, and then when you um, Want to install it? You just use your your serial number for whichever one that you want to use that has that's at least our professional or higher, and it will go ahead and use that to authenticate and authorize that to see the software. Okay, so I really encourage people to play with it. Um, there are some good tutorials on my .com. Okay, there's a series of about it, uh, 17 I think they're up to now of tutorials, of course, there's built-in tutorials as well. Visualize is a tool that you want to play with, and um, at this time, we do not have a, a separate um, class, a formal class for Visualize. We're kind of uh, putting together sort of a, an after or extras, you know, like a day camp for Visualize uh, folks who have gone through tutorials and learned what's in there. We're kind of putting together a kind of a extra extra techniques, tips and tricks and things like that. And we'll probably be rolling that out fairly soon. Um, but you can get very, very far with just using the built-in tutorials in MySolidWorks.com to, uh, to get some really cool renderings. And you know, the exciting thing about, about Visualize is it doesn't take much. You can just open something up like I did that first time. Just let's get a random, random uh, part or assembly, bring it to Visualize, and then just start dragging and dropping materials onto it. And uh, it's 
it works incredibly well. It's very you get a very quick return on your your uh, investment in terms of uh, opening things up and visualizing, seeing how how quickly things look really good. So with that, I'd like to take a I'll take a look here at any questions that we may have had. Let's see here. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions on uh, SOGS Visualize. Like I said, it's really something that um, that you should download and play with, especially if you have the free license, of course, that's what you want to do. And if you want, um, or I think we'll probably just do it automatically, for all the attendees that we had today, I have written and, and produced a document to kind of kind of getting started with Visualize, which basically kind of goes through sort of the how to get into it, you know, where exactly to go to download it, and also it has uh, kind of a summary of the hardware recommendations and impacts that you know certain graphics cards have on Visualize. And of course, GSC is always, of course, your resource for um, any questions you have. We'd be happy to answer those. So it looks like I have a question here. Let me see if I can. Okay, one question is, how many built-in wood textures are there? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know how many there are, but it's it's more than a dozen, I know all that. Again, built-in textures, um, there's quite a few. Is transparency done in SOGS or Visualize? One of the things that you'll find when you use SOGS Visualize, and this is something where, quite frankly, um, if, if I, uh, if I pop it up and show you the software, it just I can I can show you a little bit about how this works as well, um, in terms of of uh, rendering. Though we're not going to sit here and wait on my poor little laptop for things to take too long, but I can I can pop it up. Uh, but transparency is done in Visualize, and typically what you do, you'll take in your SolidWorks model and it'll be colored the way SolidWorks. Um, was done, but in almost every case, you're going to want to tweak or change or apply visualize specific materials because again, materials in visualize are specific to that rendering engine, so they they have better attributes to look more realistic than just the color mapping that you get in SolidWorks. So let me go ahead and pop open SolidWorks Visualize. Just to show a quick tour of the interface. So let's go ahead and grab uh, this Espresso Maker here. So again, you would just open up a SOLIDX model inside of Visualize, and it makes a SOLIDX Visualize project, so it's a separate file. You can then subsequently work with it without having to bring in the geometry from SOLIDWORKS over and over again. And you'll see immediately on my screen that, you know, it's kind of a fuzzy thing and basically what's happening is in real time, or it's, or it's as close to real time as my graphics will allow, it's resing up that that uh, image. And here I have, I like to keep this preview window small so that way it's faster in terms of my hardware. Uh, but here we have, you know, where your model information is. So all that all set in space. Um, the appearances that I have, these are the ones that are already on here. Okay, so it's telling me what appearances are already placed on the model. My scene information is basically my my uh, lighting, which are these you know, are HDRI lighting environments, which you can make your own if you know how, or you can just you know there's many of them available in the library built in, and of course and you can you play with any one of these. Backplates, so in this case I have sort of this softbox backplate, backplate that came with from the SOLIDX model, so they'll bring that in too. I can turn that on or off if I want to. Camera setups, so you get multiple cameras. This is the default one, but you can have different camera orientations, different camera you know, angles and, and f-stops and all that kind of stuff, and you can just pop between them. So if you're doing a multiple sort of camera photo shoot, you don't have to like change the camera every time. You can Set one camera up, set another camera up, set another camera up, and then very quickly make renderings out of all those camera orientations. 
and then here's the library. So in this library right here, this is where I can go in and say, well, let's go ahead and look for wood. Okay. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the the woods that I have loaded locally. But if you, you know, so there's two icons here. They're, they're all in the same library, but not all of them are downloaded by default. Okay. So this is my local library, and this is the cloud library. So if I go to the cloud library icon here, I go into wood, and I'm going to have more. The ones that I have downloaded are, are here, and these other ones, if I want to use them, I basically apply it, and it's first going to download it to my local system and then apply it. So let's go ahead and put in one that I already have, like, I don't know, this cedar. Say I want to make this uh, panel wood. You just drag and drop it onto there. And again, after a moment of hesitation, just because of my graphics, you know, and it's basic stuff, but you can see now it's going to start resin that up. You do have the ability inside of Visualize to determine what your uh, render um, accuracy is for your interactive mode here. So I'm in the highest accuracy right now. If I bump this down to what is known as fast, it'll still give me a good representation of the materials and the lighting, but it won't be it won't be 100% accurate. So that's a little better way to sort of play with different materials. Like I don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do something like, um, let's say let's do the rosewood. Literally just dragging and dropping it on there. Or maybe I want to do something that's not wood. Let's go ahead and do metallic paint. I'll do this yellow. So this is really the environment that Visualize is in. Again, it's very different than, than SOLIDWORKS because, again, it's a more of a photographic environment. And essentially, again, you just set up your model, put on your appearances, set up your scene, which is your lighting, and any background you want to have, and then set up your camera and then render it. So, like I said, it's interactive, it's fun, and then yes, in the bottom here we have a keyframe animator where I can go ahead and change camera orientations. Usually that's what people do. Um, and, and again, those, the keyframe animator, the turntable, things like that, that's more advanced. That's, that's in um, all the animation and such is in Visualize Professional. But Visualize Standard, you know, with basically cameras, materials, Excellent rendering is you know as good as anything in the industry and, and faster than anything. Um, that's what we have here in Visualize Standard, which again many of you you already have a license, at least one license for free. The question here is using the program similar to Photoshop. Um, not exactly because it's more of like a photo studio. So if you're a physical photographer, if you've done physical photography for, you know, products and things like that, that's really what we're set up for. Again, cameras and, and lighting are expressed in, in very photographic studio terms. But in terms of uh, Photoshop, Photoshop is really an image editor. This is an image creator. So, you know, you do a lot of rendering here. You tweak what you want, but, of course, if you want to edit things more, um, you can use tools in Photoshop to change the color, underlying color of a material without changing its, um, its specularity um, or saturation characteristics. So you just change the hue. Um, so you can do it very quickly in Photoshop, but I could change this yellow metallic to an orange metallic without having to re-render. So if I did a complete render, dropped it in Photoshop, I could post it out and actually change the color directly in Photoshop. So that's Photoshop is a, a totally different animal. It's great for photo editing, but this is kind of, this is the camera. This is what makes, takes the picture in the, in the first place. Okay. I'm looking in here and see other questions in here. For some reason, my question window is very small. I can't expand it. It's a little annoying. Okay. 
Okay, so um, another question. Where do you download? I, uh, download at the customer portal. So the same place you download your SolidWorks, um, which is, you know, SolidWorks.com, customer login, and you uh, go right to software and downloads, and you'll find it. What kind of software knowledge base do you need to, oper you need to operate and visualize? Um, the answer to that question is basically none. So all you do in visualize is say file open, go find the file. You need to know where the file is. Um, but other than that, once it's in visualize, it'll bring it right in like this. You know, there's nothing, this has nothing to do with SOLIDWORKS in terms of its interface because again, it's not CAD, it's not design. It's, it's just setting up a photo studio and recoloring things. You know, it's totally different than anything that is done in SOLIDWORKS. So, the answer is, you know, someone who has no knowledge of SOLIDWORKS at all uh, will be just as just as uh, experienced with using Visualize out of the box as someone who's been using SOLIDWORKS for 10 years. Uh, question about offering a training course. I would love to offer a training course in Visualize, but we do have a number of uh, very good tutorials. So I think, again, what our strategy right now is to be offering a sort of a day camp um, for people to come in who've gone through the tutorials and learned the basics, and then we have some advanced techniques and advanced material creation and scenes and things like that that uh, go beyond the tutorials. And, and um, that's going to be, I think, our initial strategy for, for that. Again, visualize um, in terms of, uh, of a SOLIDWORKS product. You know, there is no book. You know, there's no, like, you know, like our regular classes where we have books from SOLIDWORKS and curriculum developed there. There isn't that. The approach has been online tutorials, and then what we're going to do at GSC is enhance those, I think, with, a, with our, well, I think we're calling it a day camp. I think that's what I'm calling it. Uh, question, is there an appearance hierarchy like in 4 v 360? Uh, there is, and it's different than how it is in 4 v 360. And in Visualize, you can have appearances. Um, one will go on top of another, but you can also combine them up to four layers. So you can get some very, that's where you get the really the, the automotive type metallic paint look that we have in, in Visualize in the buildings. Those are multi-layer uh, materials. And that's, that's far beyond the scope of this uh, webinar here, but that's one of the things that we delve into and we're going to be delving into in our in our day camp type of thing because that's also a way to have multiple decal type textures um, is, is uh, multi-layer um, materials. So that's definitely something we can do, but it's it's a different animal. It works differently. Uh, Again, it's totally different than 4 v 360 in terms of the rendering engine and the way materials are put together. It's just a different environment altogether. Can I apply a new environment to see how that works? Uh, yeah, I could do that. Let's see here. So I'll go to the scenes here. I can say I want to go ahead and get my kitchen and drag and drop it in there. And again, it's going to take a little bit of time. And now I've applied the environment. Now these are lighting environments, okay? So because I have a back plane, which is just basically an image, the softbox, you know, my lighting environment is taking effect with reflections from the HDRI image, but it's not showing that in the background. If I turn off the softbox, if I, if I turn that off, now you'll see that environment. And again, here's where I can go ahead and I can rotate it like this. And now these, the HDRI environments are really good in terms of lighting. I will say that in terms of their, their pixel density, they're not super high resolution. So you'll tend to get a little bit of a blur effect, okay, from them, you know, because they're not like when you stretch them out to the kind of high res images you want, they'll tend to, to to blur out a little bit. But of course, if you are someone who knows how to do this kind of rendering or are getting into it, you will very quickly be introduced in the world of of, of HDRI environments. You can create your own images through Photoshop and things like that. You can go and get free ones and purchase really really great ones. 
and you can incorporate those right into Visualize as well. And every time I pause to do some questions, my system starts to uh, res up this image here. Next question. Looks like the whole component will get changed when if you switch uh, colors, materials, etc. Can you change different surfaces of a single component to different colors? Uh, there is a way to do that. You have to basically explode out uh, item into different into different uh, pieces. You also have the ability inside of um, Visualize when you bring in your the model from SolidWorks, you can treat it in different ways. So again, in the tutorials, they go through this. In our in our day camp, we're going to go through this, uh, reinforce a little bit. But you can bring in a SolidWorks. Uh, model and have all these set, the same uh, visualized characteristics in SolidWorks, in other words, the same material or color or whatever, okay, you can have those treated as a single part, quote unquote, inside of Visualize. So that, you know, in this case, I didn't do that. So when I changed one of these materials, the other one didn't update because, you know, these are two separate items. But I could have actually brought it in so that this part and that part coming from SolidWorks would have been treated as a single part. Likewise, you can go down to, to, um, to smaller pieces as well. Okay, so I think uh, we're coming up on time here. I just want to see if there's any more questions here. Yeah, can Visualize work with other file types other than SolidWorks uh, part or SolidWorks assembly sets or step? Yeah, so if we go ahead and open um, or import a model, okay, okay. Uh, just to show you, these are the file formats that we can we can open up inside of Visualize. So it's a lot. It's step, it's ACES, and also, again, because Visualize is a rendering tool. It's not worried like about, like, you know, knitted B wrap type stuff. We can bring in stuff like Collada files. We can bring in stuff like like um, like OBJ files. Okay, we can bring in 3D XML. We can bring in STL files. All those things. And when you bring these in again, you can bring in more than one model in your existing environment. So you can again have props and things. It doesn't have to be all in the SolidWorks model to do this. So we have a lot of because again we're rendering and that's what we're doing, we have a lot more we have more flexibility maybe, I guess I'd say, in taking ready made geometry because we don't need it to be, you know, CAD, you know, B spline, B wrap type geometry. It can be just be uh, meshes and we can deal with that and visualize quite easily. Process for adding custom materials. The process for adding custom materials is um, well documented in one of the tutorials. I'm just going to point you to those. Um, you don't want to get too far beyond the scope of this introductory webinar here, but basically you create a material um, just by walking through. I say new appearance. And you start making it. You have an underlying texture, an alpha, a bump, and a specularity, depending on the kind of material. These are some archetypes in here that you start with, like a metallic paint would have more sliders on it, different sliders than these other types. You start with them, and again, you can kind of catch all with subsurface and multi layer to really make some very sophisticated materials. But you basically just start playing with it. Again, processes and how these work, these are all in the tutorials that are online at mysolworks.com. For non solworks users, how do they access SolidWorks files stored in vault? That is a completely uh, data management centric question. So um, how would anybody other than uh, anybody else do that? That depends on the kind of vault you have. So if you're using SolidWorks PDM Professional, for example, they would need to have a, um, a client of some kind, um, probably a contributor license that they could access to 
go into the vault and get those files. But um, depending on, you know, if some people are using other kinds of PDM, it's going to depend on that. But um, there's different ways to do that as well. You could have read-only access and have people copy things out from a, from a viewer type situation if you want to, or typically people are going to have a contributor license that are basically able to check in files into the vault. If you're going to use the vault, you may want to be able to check files in that you're doing. So I mean, I could put my visualized projects in to, into uh, SARS PDM as well. I'm going to be using the the collaboration interface, which is basically Windows Explorer, to do the check in, check out part of it, and then you open it up and interact with it in whatever tool you're using. So if it's a Word document, it's Word. If it's an, uh, a Photoshop file, it's Photoshop. If it's a visualized uh, file, it's visualized.